Hi everyone and welcome to day 27 of the July colouring challenge and it is in fact the 27th of July today so we have finally caught up which is great. So let's get started. We've got a unicorn to colour today and I thought let's get these pastel markers out again because unicorns are always in beautiful pastel colours or at least I always think that they should be so <laughs> that's why I've chosen the pastels. Now uh, we're going to have to do a little bit of testing because I'm not entirely sure what colours these all are. As you remember, they definitely did not match up to their caps so we will do a little bit of testing on those. But I want to do a rainbow unicorn and um, why not a pastel rainbow? So let's have a look. So the first one that I've picked out is this one here, it's 196 and this is a lovely pastel pink. Then we have this one called number 18 and this seems to be a little bit darker which might be more like the colour that I'm going for and then I want a pastel green, a pastel blue and a pastel purple so pastel green let's take a look at this one this is number 167 and that's nice but it's not quite what I'm looking for let's try this number 59 That's a bit more like it, if you can imagine those two colours together. That's kind of what I'm going for. And then I want a pastel blue. So let's try this 183. Yeah, that's really nice. So those three colours for our pastel rainbow so far. And what else? A pastel purple. So this one here is called 145. And I think that'll be nice. Let me just check if there's anything else in here. The 146 really should be a bit lighter, shouldn't it? Yeah, it is. So we'll stick with the 145 for the purple. Do I want any other colour now for this? So we've got these four colours here. What about, what about a pastel orange? So we've got number 29. Very, very light. I know I said I wanted pastel, but I, I wanted it to be a bit of a brighter pastel than that. Let's try this one. 309. That's better. So what do we think about all of these colours together for our unicorn rainbow? Let's go for it. Okay, so let's do his hair in the, in the rainbow colours. We'll start off with, I think, blue. And we'll just do some rainbow stripes. Anywhere we want to really, I'm just going to colour this first section of his mane with the blue and then we'll go pink and do the next section. I've just gone onto his face there but it doesn't matter. Just a little bit thicker on that pink. Uh, then let's go orange. So we've got our orange next to the pink. Maybe even colour this whole little section in here orange. What next? We've got green. So I need to start bringing the colour down a little bit now. Maybe just put a little bit of it in the curve there. And then finally, we've got that purple, which is a lovely little lavender colour. So I'll just get that right in the edge of the mane. So next to the blue on the other side, I think we should have that purple again because we don't have too much of that on here. So that's our hair sorted out. It's still very light, but I did want it pastel. I could come in with some pencil and make it a little bit more vibrant. That might be a good idea. So for the skin, we want like a milky sort of pink white colour. If we think about the Luminance pencils, they have a gorgeous pink white colour. So it might even be worth, unless I can find what I'm looking for in the markers, it might be worth using that. Now look how bright that is. And it looks like it's a really light pink. I'll peep 
peach. Let me get that luminance pencil out because I know that that's the kind of colour that I'm looking for. So, which one is it? Here we are. Pink white. It's the luminance number 581. And it is white with a, t a tinge of pink in it. And that's exactly what I want for this unicorn. So I'm just going to colour over the entire skin area. And we will put the lines back in with the pigment marker. Let's do the little ears as well. Can't forget the ears. And what about a yellow for the horn, the horn of the unicorn? Let's check this one. This is number 163. Yep, fairly nice light lemon yellow there. So now I'm going to put the markers away and come in with some pencil because I do think that that will improve it generally. It does look just a little bit unfinished at the moment. So I'll pop those away so we've got room on the desk. Let's get some pencils out. Now, what pencils shall I use? I'm really tempted to go with Prismas purely because I've got them next to me and I know what colours I want to go for exactly. And I know, I know I'm trying not to use the Prismas too much, but I know exactly what colours I want here. So for the pink, we have the colour pink. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is just give it a little bit of dimension here and there. And this pink blends beautifully into the pastel base. Just a little bit of definition here on the curve of the hair. And I think it still looks pastel because we have the very, very light centre of the base colour. So we're not, we're not going crazy layering up vibrant colours here we're just giving it that little bit of something extra um the orange let me just look at this orange so I have I mean we could use a peach that might be okay but it might just be a little bit too dull I have got a deco orange which is a charisma colour the original prisma colours and this colour doesn't exist in prismas anymore but I think that would be absolutely perfect don't you just just to um deepen up this this area a little bit I'll just add a bit to the lines and then under here. There we go. Wonderful colour. I don't know why they got rid of it. The pigment is beautiful. It's not like the electric blue, which is still in the set despite it being useless. The formulation is, of that colour is terrible. So that was the deco orange, and now we're looking for something that will do that blue. It is a little bit of a, a violet blue. It's not a true blue. So I would probably say if we go for something like the blue violet lake, that might work. Yeah, see, they're in exactly the same family. So that should definitely work as a bit of a shadow colour. Bring some up here. Again, just working it into the areas where... The artist has left lines, maybe just defining the section a little bit underneath this ear where we might have some shadow. Uh, then we want a green. So that to me is looking like true green. You see how quickly I can just think of a, a colour when it's Prisma. It's either going to be true green or light green. And looking at it, I do think it is the true green. So let's use that and see how it goes. There you see, it is darker for sure, or at least more saturated, but it's still in that same colour family. So we've still got that base colour showing through. Now, violet, that's the last one, isn't it? So that is probably going to be... Hmm. I think we could go either way with this. We could go lilac or we could go lavender. 
Lavender would definitely make it more pink, whereas lilac is definitely a purple. We've only got a little bit of room to play with, so let's not worry about it too much. Put a little bit of the lilac in there. And then down the side here as well. Just enough so that we've still got a little bit of the marker showing. So while I've got my pencils out, let's grab hold of a pink, maybe even that same pink that we used, just to do a little bit of colouring inside the ear. And then for the horn, oops, we can grab a canary yellow. Just brighten that up a little bit. And put a little bit of yellow in here, because why not? Why not is becoming the catchphrase <laughs> for this. So I'm just putting a little bit of yellow in between the purple areas just to lift it a little bit. And I might even do the same over here in the pink, just, just a little to lift it. Sometimes add in <clears throat> a little bit of a layer of yellow over completely different colours just does something to it. It's probably not the best example of that technique, but I do it quite a lot, especially with red. Um, red, you can add indigo blue too as well, and that really helps. So we covered the skin with a pink white. Now, should we have a lighter pink? Maybe this one here, this is blush pink, just to add some definition maybe to the snout, make it look really cartoony. It's a really light pink, it's, it goes really nicely with everything else. And then just do a little bit of this pink shadow under the unicorn's neck. Okay, so we've not gone mad with anything really. Keeping it nice and light, nice and pastel. We're just adding in a bit of shading. That's pretty sweet. Why don't we even give for the darker pink this unicorn a little heart? Hopefully that is heart shaped. It's quite difficult. I've got a glare above me, so I can't really see if that's heart shaped. <laughs> Hopefully it is. Might just grab magenta and just very slightly outline that. There we go. So I'll add in the the lines, that's the wrong one. And then we need to think about the background. So just making sure I've added all these lines back in, just to redefine it. quite nice isn't it right so background I want it to be sparkly should we try the bee wings again or at least some other sparkly paint I want it to be as sparkly as possible because it is after all a unicorn 
So let me see. I know I keep getting out paint on this paper and it keeps going wrong and I'm not learning my lesson. But you know, in some areas of the, um, the page, it's gone all right. So we'll just have to see. Now making sure that I don't use bleach again because that would be a disaster. <laughs> let me try and find a water brush that's got actual water in it. This one has, but it's got really, really thick nib. Oh no! See, water is cursed on this project. It is cursed. I've just dripped all over. But hopefully it won't do too much damage because we've used alcohol marker and pencil. Ugh, that's so annoying. Right, okay. <laughs> never, never learn. Right, I've got a brush here that's got water in it. Um, right, so what colour of sparkles do we want? I'm looking at this one. This one's really nice. What's it called? It's called Boob Tube. So let's put a little bit of water on it. Let's get it all nice and melty. There's a lot of water on there at the moment. Did we use this colour on the day four when it all went wrong? I think we might have actually. I'm going to get a brush that's not a water brush because I really don't want to use too much water on this. So I'll get a little cat's tongue brush and just put it on. Now I know that we've got a load of water here that's dripped on, so I'm not entirely sure how this is gonna play, but Hopefully we'll be okay. So I'm being really conservative with the amount of water that I'm allowing to go onto the page. I want to get it as opaque and sparkly as possible, so we might need a couple of layers. A little bit more water in that paint. This particular paint is quite granulated. It's not a smooth paint. So I'm just trying to sort of dab on the sparkly pigment rather than smooth it on or paint it on just to build up the level of sparkle that, we've, that we need. Handmade paints are often not perfectly consistent between each pan because they've been handmade and hand you know I don't know even know what they call it where you put the paint and the pigment with the with the binder and mix it all in for ages and ages and it's all been done by hand so you can't always have a consistency and this particular one is just more granulated than it is smooth and I'm pretty sure that's the holographic pigments that are within it. I'd have to ask our lovely Karen. But I have dabbed on probably as much sparkly pigment there as I can. And I've tried to fill in every little gap. So let me see how it's looking to you. Oh, that's lovely. So just ignore the watermark that I made. And let's have a look. Oh, it sparkles beautifully. I'll zoom out a little bit so that you can so that you can see it properly. There we go. Okay, so that is day 27 done. I'll let that dry and we'll come back tomorrow for day 28. Thank you for watching.